his radio program every day, and believe me, he speaks the truth about what is happening to this declining nation. Savage tells it like it really is, and most brainless citizens in this country have no clue what is going on. In my opinion, entertainers who are puppets for the Republican Party and cheerleaders for Ted Cruz, Savage is his own man not owned by any political party. Caller Barbara, WDRC Radio. Welcome to the program, Barbara. What's on your mind? Hi, Michael, the deep sea diver. You are the deep sea diver. I was at the bookstore Barnes & Noble in Holyoke, Massachusetts about an hour ago. I bought Holyoke, Massachusetts, ground zero. I bought three copies. There was one left, and I went to the guy there, and I said, how... How come all the other books had so many? There are like 20 copies of each one of those books up there, you know. But, but yours only had one left. And he said, because people keep buying them. And I'm in shock because I'm in Massachusetts, which is... When I say Holyoke is ground zero, I mean it's ground zero for grinding up the Constitution. That's right. Massachusetts is... Uh, oh, yes. They're just so liberal that anyone who disagrees with their a progressive vision for the destruction of the world... Uh, needs to be terminated immediately from the intellectual world. Exactly, they're the, the, the center of moon. Well, I hope you, I hope you enjoy passing the message around Holyoke over the coming Halloween season. I, I do. You have many friends in that community. I'm from Connecticut, and I'm going to be taking one to my local library, one to my 91 year old mother who listens to you every day and loves you, and she gets it. Um, and another one I'll, I'll give to. You know, to a friend or for a Christmas present, and and and, and there's no there's no there's no man in your life that you can give one to. Oh no! Well, I have. I, I, I can no. I can understand. I can understand why an intelligent woman who's a conservative is perhaps the greatest threat to a man uh, in the United States of America. I have several male friends, and they are all commies. They don't realize they're commies, but they are because they mm -hmm. well, they're for, well because they're for everything good. They're very tolerant, aren't they, of everything, including their own d demise. Exactly. Although one of them is saying the numbers will overwhelm us. He can see it now. He said, oh, how are we going to do this? Well, we're so not. What, what is, this, what is this, his solution to that? If you can't beat him, join him? What's he getting, a prayer rug? Uh, why, why don't you buy him a prayer rug for Christmas? Maybe I should do that. Maybe Costco can handle a new, a new line of uh, Savage Nation prayer rugs. To, to give to all the liberals, you can give them give them a prayer rug and teach them how to pray to Mecca six times a day. Then they'll, then they'll be where they always wanted to be. That's right. On their hands and knees. Bottoms up. Anyway, look, I have very strong feelings about this. It uh, sounds like a laughing matter, but you know it's uh, 911 right now in America. Situation critical. And I am trying to sound the alarm. I've always been the Paul Revere of talk radio long before the others were. And I have to say that because if I'm not for myself, who will be? Thank you so much, Barbara, for contributing to the dialogue on the Savage Nation. That opens up one line, 855-407-282. We got some other callers. Someone from San Francisco says they cannot find the book in any of the Barnes & Nobles or any of the other stores. Another one says the book is being put below that of Whoopi Goldberg. Now, she's a great intellectual, you've got to understand. Her intellect is on par with that of Al Sharpton. And remember, Al Sharpton's an expert on climate science when he talked about carbon and the other pollutions. We got to get rid of that carbon and the other pollutions in the minority communities. Now, you got to understand that possibly was a Nobel a level insight. And I wouldn't doubt that he will join Obama for another Nobel Prize for his genius. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage, adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is our number two with The Savage Nation. Thanks for listening. We have a update on that story of the military blimp that cost $1.2 billion that broke free of its tether and was uh, floating around over Pennsylvania. 
knocking down power lines. It costs $1.2 billion. Breaks free of its tether. No one knows how, of course. Couldn't be sabotage. After all, it's our military, as you well know, not infiltrated in any way. Unmanned aircraft. Breaks free. Starts flying around 16,000 feet. Knocking out power lines. 20,000 people in Pennsylvania lost power today. Well, it landed. Landed in Bloomsburg, right by uh, a school. It had been trailed by F-16 fighter jets from the New Jersey National Guard base in Atlantic City. They're flying alongside the 243-foot-long helium-filled blimp. And we're monitoring it. Now, the blimp belongs to NORAD. It had been moored at Maryland's Aberdeen Proving Ground before becoming detached. And it was trailing 6,700 feet of tether. I have a question. Why do we have a surveillance blimp over Maryland? What are they surveying? What is the military looking at? Why is the blimp not flying over ISIS training camps so they can be turned into atom, atom, uh, atom particles? Who are they looking at with the blimp? Huh? A joint land attack cruise missile defense elevated netted sensor system? Aerostat. That's what it's called. Joint land attack. But they can't even do an acronym for that one. J-L-A-C-D. J -clack -in. The idiots in the military can't even reduce it to three or four words that you can create an acronym with. A joint land attack cruise missile defense elevated netted sensor system aerostat. <laughs> That's what the blimp was called. Why couldn't they just call it a surveillance blimp? SB. Wouldn't that work? Surveillance blimp? Just shows you how brilliant they are in the government. Anyway, that's the story. And we're, of course, talking about uh, other things on the show, including, you know what, I can't even say it. You're waiting for me to say it. You can say he talks too much about his book. So I'm not going to talk about my book. I refuse to mention Government Zero. I will not mention Government Zero uh, as frequently as you think. I will not talk about my book, Government Zero, nor the fact of how it's being buried and broken and pushed aside in some bookstores, not all. This one is widely dispersed, but it is being buried in some places. For example... He is a caller out of uh, New York, but it's about Vermont. Listen to this. Tim on WABC, what, what's going on with your ability uh, or inability to find the book? Well, I'm in Montpelier, Vermont, and I listen oh, on... Oh, I'm so sorry to hear it. You, you mean, you mean ex-Vermont, right? <laughs> well, I've lived here all my life. I am a conservative. Uh, well, of course, you're, you're actually a real Vermonter, unlike Bernie Sanders, the imposter and the interloper. So what, what's your, been your experience? I hate it when everybody lumps Dean and Sanders as a Vermonter. <laughs> well, no, I know you folks have a different viewpoint than those who uh, invaded your country, your, your state from Brooklyn. So uh, what's been your experience? I understand you're having some trouble finding Government Zero? Yes, I uh, was out scouting today uh, looking for it. I went up to our laugh of a mall it's like a strip mall uh i look well, what you're saying is you can't find any copies i would suggest you look in bernie sanders hope chest he may have them all hidden in his attic somewhere he was too i don't even know where he lives in vermont if you <laughs> so <laughs> but well, he, he, he well you know he was the mayor of burlington a very progressive city isn't it how's that worked out for burlington with bernie as the mayor well i mean he's got it made it's a college town I wonder why he became mayor of a college town, not a real town. Yeah, I don't... Well, look, I'm, send, I'm going to send you a free copy of Government Zero. I think that as a true Vermonter, you might find it as refreshing as real maple syrup. <laughs> I used to like maple syrup. It's really quite an amazing food. By the way, it's not the same as sucrose. Interesting. Not all sugars are alike. It's a health topic for another day. Great story came out the other day about sugar and children. Guess what the genius has discovered? That children get hyperactive from being fed diets too rich in sucrose. Well, really, let's go back to the 1970s when a great doctor at uh, Kaiser Permanente in Oakland wrote a book on the subject, Hyperactivity in Children, and he discovered that if you feed children too many artificial colors, flavors, sugar, they're going to get hyper, hyperactive. And many parents read the book. There was a revolution in diets at the time. And uh, many children were cured of the jumps, so the jumpiness. They didn't uh, have to take the drugs. Well, guess what happened as time went on? 
the government medical complex buried the great work of that doctor and people then started to just drug their children i wonder why i wonder where those children are today i pretty much know where they are today that opens up a line at 855-400-7282 wbap in dallas rich go ahead please what's on your mind michael god bless you i just got hold it let me sne let me sneeze <gasps> at you go ahead i just got your book in the mail today now, so I haven't read it yet, but I did a cursory overview of it. I read. You cursed it? Why would you curse? Why would you curse the book? Cursory. Come on now. Come on. Give me. A oh, come on. No, I'm just pulling your leg. Look, this is like Cafe Savage. I need to have a good time once in a while, don't I? Give me a sense of humor, Henny Youngman. Yes. I read you know, the Jack. <laughs> yeah, but I don't play. I don't play the violin, and I have more hair than him. I hear you. By the way, you and I look the same. We both have gray goatees, and we look good for our age. So well, that's very nice. I'm sure that built the audience up tremendously just now. Yeah, yeah, you look good for your age. Uh, actually, let me tell you something. I actually have cut my goatee back, and I'm growing a full beard now. I'm, I'm experimenting with a full beard because I noticed that hipsters all have full beards, which I had in the 60s and 70s, and I looked like Charles Manson and Frankenstein combined. But I realized since full beards are now kind of the leftist thing, uh, by looking like one of them, I might actually be able to infiltrate them and, of course, convince them that they're idiots. Look like them to infiltrate them, absolutely. So, I read the jacket, I went through, looked at all the, the chapter names, and uh, you're right there with uh, zero education, zero military, zero culture, zero, zero, zero. But the one that I went to, which to me is the most important one, was zero liberty because to me that's the umbrella that's the foundation of everything zero liberty interesting i go to that page and in the first paragraph we're going what a coincidence you're talking about golden texas which is a couple of towns over from dallas oh yes well in texas because oh you mean the muslim terrorist who tried to kill pamela geller yeah and the muslim terrorists who unfortunately for them weren't able to kill Pamela Geller? They were killed by police? Yeah, a good policeman on alert. You mean the Muslim terrorists who believe in free speech as long as it quotes the Quran? The hypocrites that they are. Shoving their... You know, let me read you a line. In other words, they believe in their hate speech and no one else's. As with everything else, you can count on progressives to side with the Islamists on free speech issues and smear anyone who tries to stand up to them. Deniers of the new Holocaust constantly tell us ISIS is not a threat to the United States. They mock conservatives who talk about the danger of Sharia law as conspiracy theorists. And then I say I'm talking about how Bill O'Reilly and Greta Van Susteren bent over backward to blame the victims. They didn't attack the Islamic murderers. They didn't attack the religion itself for putting hatred in the minds of these throwbacks. No, they attacked the person who provoked them, Pamela Geller. O'Reilly couldn't have been more wrong. It accomplished an awful lot. Well, okay, I'll stop right there. We all know that O'Reilly is a compromised individual, which is why he's so successful. Rich, thanks for calling. Let's move on. 855-400-7282 is a good one. New York City, WABC. Joey, go ahead, please. Yeah, Michael, this is uh, Joey from Staten Island. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you? Uh, how are you, Mike? I uh, just want to let you know, we went to Costco today, and as we walked in the store, there was tables set up with all the new books uh, that were out on display. Yep. Uh, your book wasn't there, but as we walked further down, deeper into the store, there was two, two of your books on a table with kids' books. Children's books. Well, that's good. Maybe the children will buy it. I don't know. It's got a nice cover of a nice guy with a good-looking hat, nice suit. Maybe it's a. It's got. A, I got a puzzle piece in my hand of a, a nation, a red nation. Maybe it's a perfect children's book. I don't know. Could be that it's w useful for children. It could be that's why the good people at the bookstore put it in the children's section. Thanks, Joey. Thanks for the report for being part of the Savage Nation Army. Savage Nation Army. Are you out there doing your job in the Savage Nation Army? My foot soldiers, have you gone to your local bookstore and made sure the book is on the octagon tables in Barnes & Noble? Have you made sure that if you see somebody trashing the book or hiding the book, 
You're taking pictures and sending them to us, to Uncle Mike? 